Well, good morning or good afternoon, as the case may be. Welcome to our Good Friday liturgy. We are so glad that you all could join us that, uh, today as we recall our Lord's passion and death. The disciples who witnessed these events walked in sorrow and fear, not knowing what the future held for them. Today we walk in sorrow too, but not in fear. We walk in joy and hope. Joy in knowing that Jesus' passion and death are not the end, but the beginning, leading to his resurrection, and hope for eternal life in the presence of our good and gracious God. Blessed be our God forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Holy and ever-living God, look graciously on this your family, for which our Savior Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and to suffer death upon the cross. Grant that we, glorifying in his salvation, may take up our crosses and follow him, who is alive and glorified with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from my cries of anguish? My God, I cry out to you by day, but you do not answer. By night, but I find no rest. Yet, you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the one Israel praises. In you, our ancestors put their trust. They trusted and you delivered them. To you, they, were, they cried out and were saved. In you, they trusted and were not put to shame. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near. I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax. It has melted within me. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death. Dogs surround me. A pack of villains encircles me. They pierce my hands and my feet. All my bones are on display. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ According to John. When he had finished praying, Jesus left with his disciples and crossed the Kidron Valley. On the other side, there was a garden and he and his disciples went into it. Now Judas, who betrayed him, knew the place, because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas came to the garden, guiding a detachment of soldiers and some officials from the chief priests and the Pharisees. They were carrying torches, lanterns, and weapons. Jesus, knowing all that was going to happen to him, went out and asked them, who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. I am he, Jesus said. And Judas, the traitor, was standing there with them. When Jesus said, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Again, he asked them, who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they said. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. If you are looking for me, then let these men go. This happened so that the words he had spoken would be fulfilled. I have not lost one of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Jesus commanded Peter, put your sword away. 
Shall I not drink the cup the Father has given me? Then the detachment of soldiers with its commander and the Jewish officials arrested Jesus. They bound him and brought him first to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jewish leaders that it would be good if one man died for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple were following Jesus. Because this disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the high priest's courtyard. But Peter had to wait outside at the door. The other disciple, who was known to the high priest, came back spoke to the servant girl on duty there and brought Peter in. You aren't one of this man's disciples too, are you? She asked Peter. He replied, I am not. It was cold and the servants and officials stood around a fire they had made to keep warm. Peter also was standing with them, warming himself. Meanwhile, the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. I have spoken openly to the world, Jesus replied. I always taught in synagogues or at the temple where all the Jews come together. I said nothing in secret. Why question me? Ask those who heard me. Surely they know what I said. When Jesus said this, one of the officials nearby slapped him in the face. Is this the way you answer the high priest? He demanded. If I said something wrong, Jesus replied, testify as to what is wrong. But if I spoke the truth, why did you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Meanwhile, Simon Peter was stand, still standing there warming himself. So they asked him, you aren't one of his disciples too, are you? He denied it, saying, I am not. One of the high priest's servants, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, challenged him. Didn't I see you with him in the garden? Again, Peter denied it. And at that moment, a rooster began to crow. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, 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 oh. sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? John 18, verse 28 through 19, verse 16. Then the Jewish leaders took Jesus from Caiaphas to the palace of the Roman governor. By now it was early morning, and to avoid ceremonial uncleanness, they did not enter the palace because they wanted to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and asked, what charges are you bringing against this man? If he were not a criminal, they replied, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said, take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. But we have no right to execute anyone, they objected. This took place to fulfill what Jesus had said about the kind of death he was going to die. Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea? Jesus asked. Or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew? Pilate replied. Your own people and chief priests handed you over to me. 
what is it you have done? Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. What is truth? retorted Pilate. With this, he went out again to the Jews gathered there and said, I find no basis for a charge against him, but it is your custom for me to release to you one prisoner at the time of Passover. Do you want me to release the king of the Jews? They shouted back, no, not him. Give us Barabbas. Now Barabbas had taken part in an uprising. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him in a purple robe and went up to him again and again saying, Hail the king of the Jews, and slapped him in the face. Once more, Pilate came out and said to the Jews gathered there, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no basis for a charge against him. When Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, Pilate said to them, Here is the man. As soon as the chief priests and the other officials saw him, they shouted, Crucify! Crucify! But Pilate answered, you take him and crucify him. As for me, I find no basis for a charge against him. The Jewish leaders insisted, we have a law, and according to that law, he must die because he claimed to be the son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was even more afraid, and he went back inside the palace. Where do you come from? He asked Jesus. Jesus gave him no answer. Do you refuse to speak to me? Pilate said. Don't you realize I have power either to free you or to crucify you? Jesus answered, You would have no power over me if it were not given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to set Jesus free, but the Jewish leaders kept shouting, If you let this man go, you are no friend of Caesar. Anyone who claims to be a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard this, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judge's seat at a place known as the Stone Pavement, which in Aramaic is Gabbatha. It was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about noon. Here is your king, Pilate said to the Jews, but they shouted, Take him away! Take him away! Crucify him! Shall I crucify your king? Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar, the chief priests answered. Finally, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus. Please stand as you are able. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him with two others, one on either side and Jesus in the middle. Pilate had a notice prepared and fastened to the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this sign for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. And the sign was written in Aramaic Latin, and Greek. The chief priests of the Jews protested to Pilate, do not write the king of the Jews, but that this man claimed to be the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, dividing them into four shares, one for each of them, with the undergarment remaining. This garment was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. 
Let's not tear it, they said to one another. Let's decide by lot who will get it. This happened that the scripture might be fulfilled that said, they divided my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. So this is what the soldiers did. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there, and this disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, the disciple took her into his home. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished, and so that scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received a drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Now it was the day of preparation, and the next day was to be a special Sabbath. Because the Jewish leaders did not want the bodies left on the crosses during the Sabbath, they asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken down. The soldiers therefore came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with Jesus, and then those of the other. But when they came to Jesus and found that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. The man who saw it has given testimony, and his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth and he testifies so that you also may believe. These things happen so that the scripture would be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. And, as another scripture says, they will look on the one they have pierced. Later, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. Now Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly because he feared the Jewish leaders. With Pilate's permission, he came and took the body away. He was accompanied by Nicodemus, the man who had earlier had visited Jesus at night. Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds. Taking Jesus' body, the two of them wrapped it with the spices in strips of linen. This was in accordance with Jewish burial customs. At the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden, a new tomb, in which no one had ever been laid, because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. Grace to you and peace from God, our Creator, and from our, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Self-emptying, the most profound reality of Jesus is witness to us this Good Friday, is his self-emptying. As the readings from John were just read, I was struck by how proactive Jesus was in this whole story not the reactive that we sometimes think of, but proactively and willingly and powerfully enacting God's plan for this world. So we know that Jesus is self-emptying. It was the only way for Jesus to get unstuck the people who were weighted down by their own stuckness, by their own self-interest, by their own power. As Paul says in Philippians, he who did not count equality with God as something to cling to, but empties himself empties himself, 
taking on the form of a servant. This past week, the week that we in Christendom call holy, was a week where the eyes of the world were fixed on a tiny little slip containing a very large ship along the Suez Canal. The world was fixated on this large stuck ship called the Ever Given, rendering hundreds of ships and billions of dollars um, marooned as nothing could go through the canal for days and days. The sheer weight and the size of that ship captured the attention of the whole world. Unfortunately, some of the seafarers that were affected weren't captured as readily as the narrative of this big ship, but nevertheless, it captured the whole world because this ship was so big and so powerful and yet was reduced to complete vulnerability by some sand. How are we likewise stuck in our own vulnerability? If you are like me, sometimes you get stuck. Well, oftentimes you get stuck and I get stuck in our own self-interest stuck in the lies of self-sufficiency that somehow we're big enough to surmount anything. Sometimes getting stuck in the inability to walk in one another's shoes, stuck in the quest for control and power. We need something or someone to help us get unstuck. This uh, rather long set of readings from the Gospel of John is hard to completely digest, but one thing rises to the fore for me today that hasn't always risen to the fore before, and that is that John's narrative emphasizes not so much Jesus' suffering, but rather Jesus' control of the events. As it says in the reading, John, Jesus, knowing all that was going to happen to him, went out and asked them, who is it that you want? It's almost like he's saying, I've always been here. I'm right here, I'm in the room. I know what's gonna happen. Jesus' control of the events is that he gives himself willingly to die for others, this self-emptying. This isn't something that's foisted upon him or surprising to him. This is something he does for the sake of bringing down the empire that he set his whole life against protesting. Jesus begins to reverse the damage that the imperial system has caused to so many people by his own volition, by his own self-emptying. The powerful no longer have the last word. The large, unmovable ship no longer has the last word. If you were like me, you were struck by this narrative this week of that large ever given being unstuck by that seemingly little bulldozer that was just sort of picking little by little at the sand and the bank the large unmovable ship being freed 
by the ongoing self-emptying concerns of this bulldozer. This bulldozer that Jesus brings to our scene today. This bulldozer of compassion, of unconditional love, of self-emptying, beginning to unstuck a people mired in the shallow, sandy pits of self-interest. Jesus opens the great canal to God's unfathomable love and unobstructs the way the truth and the life for all humankind. Amen. Let us pray, responding to faithful God, have mercy with, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Faithful and compassionate God, your spirit guides the church and makes it holy. Here are the prayers we offer, that in our work on the sea in ports and in our homes, we may serve you faithfully. Faithful God, have mercy through Jesus Christ, our savior, amen. Kindle, we pray in every heart, the true love of peace and guide with your wisdom those in authority, officers, union representatives, lawmakers, ministers, parents, that justice, peace, and freedom may increase until the earth is filled with the knowledge of your love. Faithful God, have mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Hear the cry of all who call on you in trouble. Seafarers who are sick, troubled, oppressed, or missing home. Family members who are grieving. Ministers struggling to persist. Grant them the joy of receiving your help in their need. And give us, we pray, the strength to serve them. Faithful God, have mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Faithful and compassionate God, you create and love all the peoples of the earth in each language and each culture. Let your grace abound to your glory and to the joy of your people. Faithful God, have mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. God, our refuge and strength, accept the fervent prayers of your people and bring to fulfillment your plan for all creation, land, sea, and sky, through Jesus Christ, your firstborn, who is alive with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And join with me now as I lead us in a closing prayer. God of our redemption abundantly bless your people who have devoutly recalled the death of Christ. Grant us forgiveness, renew us, 
strengthen our faith and increase in us the fullness of life. We ask this through Christ our Savior. Amen. And receive these words of our Lord's benediction. May Jesus Christ, who for our sake became obedient unto death, even death on a cross, keep you and strengthen you now and forever. Amen. Well, thank you all for joining us, uh, especially for those who participated in our service today. It's uh, great to uh, see so many faces involved today and, and uh, for those who joined us and maybe will be joining later uh, to view the recording. I uh, wish you all a very uh, blessed Good Friday uh, and an Easter season as you continue to minister uh, our Lord's presence in the lives of those that you serve. So may God keep and bless you all. Thank you.